I mean, the leading informed consent cases were actually I mean, two, Canterbury versus Spence and Cobbs versus Grant, which were both decided in 1972, which is around the same time I started working in this field. So that was nice. Coincidence, you know, the first commentators would either say, these cases are right, the judges are right, or they're just totally crazy. But mostly everybody said, as I did, that the judges were right, and we had to figure out a way to implement this. So could you say a little more about those cases for people who don't know more? Sure. I mean, Cobbs v. Grant is, was uh, like a pretty standard medical malpractice case of, in California. It got the California Supreme Court. And uh, the question was, there was a malpractice case. But then the other question was, did the person understand what he was getting into? Did he know what the risks were of the surgery? This was a, a stomach ulcer surgery. And did he know that there could be complications that he could lose? Uh, another part of his intestine, he could lose his spleen, and he was not told that. And the surgeon said, well, I didn't tell him that because nobody tells him that. We surgeons, kind of, it's custom in the trade. We don't tell patients about the risks because then they won't get the surgery. And they, we know that they have to have the surgery. <laughs> so, so, and uh, the court was not impressed, basically. The court said, this is not a matter like how you cut, what kind of incision you do. Those are things that you guys, the medical profession, you guys get this, you set your own rules on that, your own usage. But here we're talking about your obligation to the patient. And it's the law that's going to set that, not you. And the fact that none of you tell the patients anything is not meaningful. It just means that you're, you know, you're all doing the wrong thing. And the court decided that it was the nature of the doctor-patient relationship, that it was a fiduciary or trust relationship that required the doctor to disclose certain information before he or she asked for permission to, for the surgery, for example. And, you know, they argue to this day, well, what kind of information? And the court right there said material information, by which they meant information that might lead the patient to make a different decision, to say no. Now, it's exactly the kind of information the doctor didn't want to give up. <laughs> if I told them the risks, they wouldn't take the surgery. Well, that's the, then you know you got to tell them that. That's what you got to tell them. So that's, you know, been the basis for the legal doctrine of informed consent. Since, since the early 1970s, still based on the fiduciary nature of the doctor-patient relationship. But the rights of hospital patients also stresses the need for patient advocates, which seems to me is a, is a big step beyond just the issue of informed consent. Well, it is. I mean, that, that there's both the theoretical, you know, what rights do you have, and then much more practical, how could you, is it possible for you to exercise those rights? And the truth of the matter is, I mean, when you're sick, when you're really sick, uh, you're in no position to exercise any of your rights. It's really true that, as people say, you're not yourself. You're really not yourself, literally and figuratively. Um, and the last thing you really think about is exercising your rights. You want, to, you want the pain to go away. Or you want someone to help you uh, get through whatever this is that you have. And that's number one. And, and it really blocks out everything else. So I do, do think, I have from the first day that you need someone else who I call an advocate to help you navigate that system in the hospital. You know, and I think whoever that person is, they should be with you 24 hours a day. And I've more recognized as the years go on that that's a, you know, I don't want to put guilt trip on people. Some people just can't stay 24 hours in the day. You know, some people have other family uh, obligations. But, but in so far as you can, it's really important to have someone there. And, you know, not just for, for rights, but also for safety. <laughs>